So we've been through growing tobacco, we've been through harvesting it, we've been through curing it, now we have to ferment it. And to do that, we need to keep our leaves in a chamber at 120 degrees, 70% humidity for four to six weeks. So with that being said, we need a some sort of environment to keep it at that uh, those conditions. You can use a old refrigerator, old freezer, maybe an old dishwasher, just any insulated kind of chamber or maybe even a tent, but a tent's not gonna be that well insulated. What I have here is just one big piece of insulation from the Home Depot, the styrofoam insulation, and basically taped together, made into a box, and with PVC pipes on the edges to uh, add to the structural integrity. We'll go open this up. Here's what we got inside. Here's the heat source. The heat source is just your crock pot with some sort of screen on top so the leaves don't fall into the hot water. If, it, if the leaves fall in there, they're never the same again. So basically I have the leaves in a pile instead of hanging. It might be better to hang the leaves up, but this works for me. I've been doing this a while. It, it, it's, this seems to work okay too. And to monitor the temperature, I got one of these transmitters with a receiver and you could be like 100 feet away and you don't have to open the door and check the temperature so it's really cool you could sleep next to the uh, re receiver to see check on the temperature and you basically have to keep it around 120 70 percent humidity all times I, I mean it doesn't have to be um, perfect but you know j just ballpark it with that most people will probably get a thermostat to keep the temperature constant, but I don't have one. And this seems to be working fine. Um, and you also get a fan to circulate the air around in here. But yeah, all this is, is this box is just one piece of styrofoam insulation made into a box. And the heat source, again, the crock pot, the humidity source is the water inside. With, uh, it has to be on like a piece of cement board because I don't want the um, crock pot touching the styrofoam here. So that's the chamber I use to ferment to keep the heat in and the humidity in. And the shelf here, this is just a old tomato cage with an oven rack on top. That's the shelf. Now the tobacco leaves are tied into hands. This is just like a hairband, I think, with about six leaves in every hand. So after you tie your cured tobacco leaves in the hands make sure you hydrate them first so they're kind of pliable they're not all crunchy um, you, you, we, we just put them in a pile and but we have to shuffle this pile every day so mold does not form there's probably better ways of doing this like if you hang the leaves up you might not have to do that as much but this seems to be working for me and another thing about the crock pot I never keep it full to the brim because that gets way too humid. I keep it about half full. And that you gotta refill about once a day. I usually do it in the morning when I shuffle these leaves. And to shuffle the leaves, I just take all of them out, randomize them, and then put them back in. Similar to what I did in my curing video. How I just make several piles and then randomize them. All right, so I've taken the leaves out to shuffle them so mold doesn't accumulate. Here they are. So basically all I do to randomize them, just lay them all on the table, grab a hand, grab another hand, just kind of pick random locations. And go ahead and put that back in, in a different order. Here we go, repeat, grab one here, just randomly choose, over here. And over here. Whoop. There we go. Now it's important to keep the leaves away from the sides here because water seems to condense on the, the walls here and you don't want the leaves getting that soaked. So just keep them away from the sides. One more time. Grab one. Grab another. 
in a random order and that should be good and that and we do that we want to do this every day I do it in the morning just shuffle the leaves and at the same time fill this up halfway now I'm gonna put them all back in here alright so we got the leaves all back in here stacked in randomized and ready to go for another day I wanted to add about the shelving system here this is to keep it away from the crock pot it's about uh, maybe a little less eight inches off away from the crock pot and that's because if you put the leaves right on top of this yeah say you just put an oven um, grill on top of this it's too close the leaves get bone dry no matter how much water is in there the water can be full to the top and the, the leaves will still get way too dry because they're too close to the heat source so you want to keep it about a foot away the crock you want to keep the crock pot a foot away from um, your pile of leaves here so if you were to make a chamber like this, I think it's around four feet tall by around two and a half feet wide, two and a half feet deep, and I could fit probably around three pounds of leaves in here. So if you have a large amount, you, you might want to make a larger uh, kiln or chamber based upon those dimensions because I only can do about three pounds at a time. All right, so let's do a recap. First, we need some sort of insulated chamber. You can even do some sort of tent, but it's not gonna be as insulated as, you know, insulation. And to do that, just get a sheet of, in one rectangle of insulation, of styrofoam insulation from the Home Depot, make like a box out of it, tape together the edges with this silver tape here, and if that's too flimsy, add some PVC pipe to the sides, and that, that'll do it for you. Now, the heat source is gonna be a crock pot with the screen on top, cement board on the bottom or something just to block it so it doesn't touch the styrofoam because it gets hot. A shelf to keep it about a foot away from the heat source. Stack your leaves, put them in hands of six. So take six leaves and wrap them in a rubber band or something. That's all that means. And uh, that'll give you a pile. And every 24 hours, rearrange that pile so mold doesn't accumulate and keep the leaves away from the sides to monitor the temperature get one of these things that's the transmitter here's the receiver this is cold because I've had the door open for a few minutes but yeah keep this at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and that around 70 percent that's good it's not gonna be perfect but it doesn't matter because you're gonna shuffle the leaves every day if it gets too humid mold won't grow because you're constantly disturbing the pile all right, so repeat that process for four to six weeks, and don't forget to fill this crock pot up once a day. It doesn't have to be all the way. I, I tend to fill it halfway, because if you fill it all the way, it gets too humid in here. But that's going to depend, of course, on what kind of insulated chamber you're using. Maybe you're, even, maybe you're even using some sort of tent, like a tent made with a painter's tarp or something. All right, so let that go for four to six weeks. It starts tasting good around week three, but it's still a little rough. Week four is a lot better. Week five, top notch. And uh, week six, I think, is about as good as it's going to go. So pe some people call this sweating the leaves. I call it fermenting. I don't know. If it's probably not true fermentation. doesn't really matter. Basically, um, I think you're l getting the ammonia out of the leaves. Because on like week one, week two, you can really smell ammonia coming off the leaves. And then... I guess that's what makes it the raw leaves smoke so harsh because I could smoke a raw leaf and it gives it really it gives me a headache it gives it makes me kind of nauseous but I smoke a week six leaf a, a week a leaf fermented for six weeks it tastes very good so it's well worth the wait I was impatient at first I wanted to get it done real fast but you taste a week six leaf it's quite good and I think I will, I'm not going to do week by week like I did with the curing video and show how dark the leaves get. But yeah, basically the longer these leaves go, the darker they're going to get. Now this looks green, but it's just the, it's the camera because I'm looking at it in real life. It's, it's quite brown. Um, yeah, but I'll show the final product and they're, they should be darker than this. Better example, well I took them all out. But yeah, they're going to be darker than this. That's the result I always get. All right, so see you in six weeks. We're here at the kiln about uh, seven weeks later. Let's have a look at the uh, finished product. 
we could see um, how much the pile shrank and the color change. Now I went seven weeks because um, six weeks didn't seem quite done. I think it was because the uh, crock pot here was uh, drying out too fast, so I actually had to change the the filling time to twice a day. And I, I actually I said before just keep it half full. I'm going to change my mind. Just just fill it three quarters full. It's going to depend on um, uh, the weather, depend on the uh, season. Because before that worked, but now it seemed to dry out too fast. So I gave it another week, and uh, let's get these out on the table to have a look at that color change. All right, here's the color change. Get a nice, have a dark color out of these. And I tried some last night. Yeah, it's pretty good. As far as mold goes, I hardly had any mold. I think about two leaves out of all these got mold on them. I just discarded those. So this turned out really well. Taste kind of, I guess you'd call it like a nutty taste. It's pretty good. It's hard to describe. There you go. Now this isn't the best way to ferment these. I mean, you get a... You need a little computer fan to get in there and circulate the, um, have the air circulate so it's the humidity is kind of homogenous throughout the whole uh, environment in there. Or you could just do what I did, that's easier. Not the best way to ferment, but it certainly is easy. Thermostat, get a thermostat, keep it 120 all the time. Um, and you can even hang the leaves too. So yeah, like I just said, it's going to depend how much you, you fill up your crock pot. It's going to depend on the weather. It's going to depend on this, the season. So just kind of screw with that. You want to go with 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 70% relative humidity, give or take. Just just be be in that area. And uh, yeah, and you, you'll know it's, it's working if you get that color change because it's definitely darker than it was before. All right, that'll do it.